So many tabs open. Okay, we're good. All right. Um, all right, so we're gonna start with weights. Uh, we'll start with breathing and then we'll get into weights, but light weights, I have two sets of three pound weights and I generally use both of them at the same time, but maybe some of the time we'll just do either or not. <laughs> either just three pounds, two pounds, one pound, whatever works for you. Inhale, open up, reach out and up, feel your feet on the floor, feel your arms reaching up and then just reach one side longer and then the other side longer, just stretching one side of the body and the other. And then exhale, soften, let your arms come down. And again, inhale, up, stretching one side and then the other side. You don't need to hold your breath up there. You can just keep breathing. Alternating one hand and then the other. And then just feeling out into the space. One more time, inhale up, interlace your hands this time, push out through the heels of the hands and a little bit deeper stretch side to side, getting to that space between your rib cage and your pelvis without maybe going to your deepest stretch, just moving so it's stretching and then coming back. And then we'll just do a little spiraling, twisting, looking around behind you, generic twisting. Any way that feels good to you, shifting your weight, not shifting your weight, just gonna do it for a minute. I was shoveling snow the other day and now I'm I think it's pretty much in my lats. I think I, I don't think I pulled it. I just gave it a little extra twinginess so I can feel it on one side. I was trying to be really even about my shoveling and do both sides equally, but clearly I didn't. All right, and then let's come in. We're just gonna circle the shoulders, big circles. Letting that massage the space under your shoulder blades so the muscles that are between your ribs and your shoulders, letting them have some motion. And then of course, everything else as well. So rib cage, lungs and heart are moving around and change direction up and over the top. And I'm bending and straightening my knees as I do this. And then let's just turn our head from side to side. So you've done all that work with the shoulders, now come back into that central channel finding your axis, turning from one side to the other. As you're doing that, see if you can relax your jaw. Eyes easy. And then coming in, tilting your head one way and then the other way. And then coming in, head is gonna go forward and backward. As you're up there moving, see if you can let the muscles underneath below your head just get easier and easier. And then we're gonna do all the way down to the floor and then looking at the ceiling. Feeling the stretch through the tissue of the neck as you look up. And then the last one, which is maybe a little more challenging is side to side. So tilting your whole Shifting your whole head like an old fashioned typewriter from side to side. Think of your jaw just slotting over one way and then the other. Good, and then I said that was the last one. It's not the last one, we're gonna do one more. You're gonna take your head, tilt it to the side, drop it forward, take it to the other side, just forward and side. We're not gonna go back on this one. As you're in that forward and side, let your upper back and neck release as much as possible. And then we're gonna add our weights and we're gonna do a little bit more stuff. So I think that I'm gonna go with um, six pounds myself, but feel free to do three, do something lighter, do whatever feels good to you. We're just gonna take the hands down and you're gonna circle alternating shoulders, one shoulder and then the other. So we've moved all of that tissue, fascia, muscle, bone, organs, moving all of that stuff. And now we're just adding a little bit more weight to it. And adding weight is gonna increase the strength 
of all of those things, the tissue, the bone, the fascia, change direction up and over. Yeah, I can feel this even in that lat. And then we're gonna go with that elbow, like you're pulling a um, lawnmower, starting a lawnmower, pulling up and back, one elbow and then the other. And I've just widened my stance a little bit. I've got a little bit of a weight shift going on here. Using your breath. Some kind of exhaling on one side and then inhaling on the other. And then coming in and we're gonna take our hands right up to the middle, rotate out, rotate in, flip them over and down. Up, rotate, out, in, flip, down. Up, rotate, out, in, flip, down, up, rotate, out, in, flip, down, up, collarbones wide, shoulders wide. So I'm not really squeezing in in the back. I'm just trying to stay wide with this. Elbows into the side. Up, flip, rotate, rotate, flip, down, two more, up, flip, out, in, and down, last one, up, flip, out in, bring it in and down. And we're gonna start in parallel and we're gonna do, I'll see how this goes. I may get rid of some of my weights part way through. We're gonna do plies, we're staying vertical in our torso. So we're not doing like a more gym class type of squat. We're doing more of a ballet style plie with the, with the um, bicep curl. So we're gonna have plie and stretch, two, legs parallel, three, and four, and then we're gonna press up, two straight legs, up and down, one, two, three, four. Turning out your feet so your heels are together. This is just a gentle turnout, a first position that is manageable from the hips. So finding that end, here we go, plie one, two, chest open, three, collarbones wide, four, pressing up, one, to my hands are just slightly in front of me. Think of them in, in line with the front of your hairline. Feet are parallel, going one, two. You could do this with heavier weights. So really, if you're doing more weight work, feel free to go heavier. If you're not, you could even do it with no weights at all. Two, three, four. Turning out your feet, knees over the toes, plie one. Two, three, four, going up, straight legs, one, two, I'm engaging my inner thighs, I'm engaging my glutes to help balance this, four, feet parallel, knees over the toes, one, two, three, four, we're not going to go up on this one, we're going to take it forward, arch, stick out your butt, Try and arch your back there so you're not hunched, that you're really arching, working the erectors of your spine, opening out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Taking your hands to your hips. So hands are gonna stop at your hips, this is triceps again, we're arching and opening, going back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two more, nine, 10, and come in, and again, circles with your shoulders, with the weights, going back, feeling your lungs moving, heart moving, Veins and arteries moving in your body as we're moving, change direction. So they're getting the motion too, which can help clear up any stickiness in there. Good. And let's put the weights down for a minute. We're gonna do a little arm articulation exercise. So you're going to have your hands, both hands are gonna make a little circle. Your wrists are gonna stay connected to your hips. So circling one, two, three, four, change direction, one, two, three, 
four. Then your elbows are gonna stay connected. Going one, two, three, four, other way, one, two, three, four. And then your whole arm, one, two, three, four, other way, one. So we're kind of cycling the arms in the vertical plane, three, four. Now we're gonna change it. You're gonna lunge forward. Well, let's lunge forward on your, it's probably your left foot. And you're gonna do a come on with your arm, one. Opposite arm, two, three, four, going back, one. Big arm circle, let your chest, ribs, and lungs open, three, four, and change legs. Other leg is in front, circling with a come on, one, two, or a throw, three, four, and going back, one, two, three, Four, change your legs one more time. This time you're gonna try and keep your hips facing front, but you're gonna turn your head towards your hand. So you're following your hand with your eyes. One, two, three, four, other direction. One, see if you can watch your hands, watch your fingers, two, with your eyeballs. Three, four, change it to the other side. Circling back, look at your hand. One, hips stay front. Two, three four, circling forward, looking at your hand, one, two, three, four. And notice if there's a part where your eyes just kind of skip looking at your hand. So for me, usually back there, I'm not really looking. So just notice what's going on with that coordination. All right, do we want to do more weights? We're gonna do more weights with us when we're on the floor. So let's take, get them so they're close enough to you that you can grab them and we're gonna go down to the floor. All right, let's start, I don't know, this cross-legged position, I feel like it's such a great way to release my hips and lower back. So I'm starting here. If this cross-legged position doesn't work for you, you can always go here, legs out, elevating your pelvis a little bit is also an option. So cross-legged or any other seated position, side stretch one way, open it up and then take it the other way. Breathing into it, ah. using your lungs. And then circling the whole way around, take it to the side, reach forward, head reaching away from the tail, big circle, open it up, other way. Sideways, lengthen it out all the way around, inhale, open. Two more times, sideways and forward and around, inhale, lift. So this is really the only thing where I get this really three-dimensional relationship between my rib cage and my pelvis. Only in this seated position, or if I was doing ballet, doing like a full circular port de bras, do I get that really three-dimensional movement through the rib cage in relationship to the pelvis. Change it to the other side. We're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start right away with the circles, going to the side, taking it forward, all the way around and inhale up. One of the things that I really like about being sore from doing something is then I can really feel when I'm using those muscles and what they're doing, right? So like when, for example, this lat thing, I've got this thing going on here. Like, oh, I'm getting a nice stretch there. This is lifting and working it. Like, it just really helps me to know what's going on. So I feel like that's a bonus. All right, we're gonna go down to the floor and we're gonna grab our weights. So I am going to, I'm just gonna use one set. Uh, onto the floor, knees together, feet pigeon toed. So it's like this, my feet are doing this, turning in, my knees are together pigeon toed and knock knee position to stabilize my lower body. And I'm gonna take my weights and circle them around. So I'm looking towards my hands and I'm also trying to notice is one hand dominating the weight holding. Inhale, open, exhale up. Letting this massage through your back.
using your breath, finding a flow of breath that works with the movement. And then change direction, go the other way. Exhale as you come up. Inhale as you're going down. So really feeling that relationship again between your rib cage and your pelvis. So here it's moving again, slightly differently than the other way, but we're getting this relationship and come into center, get rid of your weights. And we'll just go for a really easy loose knee drop from side to side, opening all the way through the middle, letting that massage out your hips as you roll across, really releasing your inner thighs. Chest and lungs open and wide. Oh, I just had some coffee and it's really sloshing around in there. You can feel the coffee sloshing. And then let's roll all the way onto one side, roll across your back onto the other side. So full body half from one side to the other. This is known as homolateral movement. We're using one side to open and then the other side to close. And then let's open up through the middle. So unfolding all the way open, fold it in, open it up and fold it in, open it up and fold it in and open it up and fold it in. I've got my assistant here just helping make sure that I am keeping my form. That is the squeaky beak. All right, let's come in and warm up our back a little bit by doing bridges. So we're gonna, let's roll up and roll down. So it's gonna be a little bit more complex than usual. Sometimes we do this one. You're gonna tuck your tail, we'll roll it up on the exhale. Then you're gonna inhale, push with your legs, chest comes towards your chin, exhale, pull with your feet, knees away from your head, roll it down through your spine all the way to the bottom. When you hit the bottom, you're gonna arch up so you have space under your waist. And then exhale, flatten that out, curl, roll it all the way up through your spine, all the way up to the top. Inhale, chest to chin, exhale, knees away from you, soften, vertebra by vertebra, peeling down into the floor. Inhale, arch, just lifting your waist, your tailbone is pushing down into the mat. Exhale, flatten it out, curl, roll it up. Inhale, chest to chin, exhale, knees away from you, roll down through your spine. Inhale, arch, exhale, curl, rolling it up. Inhale, push, exhale, pull, roll it down through your spine all the way to the bottom. Inhale, arch, exhale, curl, roll it up. Inhale, back, exhale, forwards, roll it down. Last one. Arch, exhale, roll it up. Inhale, push back. Exhale, pull forward. We're just gonna stay here with that push back. See if you can arch further and then exhale, pull, really firing up your hamstrings. Pushing, arching, pulling, knees pull away. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, two more. Inhale, exhale, last one. Inhale, on the exhale, let yourself roll it all the way down to the floor. And let's take the legs up, big circles with your knees, circling them away from each other. You can let your head either stay on the floor or it can come up and go down, really listening into what feels good to you. And then change direction other way. Yeah, so if I leave my head on the floor, I get more sort of fluidity in my spine. But if I let my head come up, I can kind of squeeze things out a little bit more. Sounds weird. Bringing it out so that there's a little bit more muscle activation. All right. And then coming down, we're gonna press right back up again. So feet on the floor, lifting up, interlace your hands behind your butt, walk your shoulders closer together. 
if possible. If that's not possible, don't worry about it. It's totally fine if your hands are just down there on the floor. Inhale, tippy toes, exhale, lower. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Press it up, lower down. Last one, up and down. You can inch your feet a little further out. You're going to inhale, knees open wide. Exhale, knees touch. Inhale as wide as you can go. Exhale, close. Rolling to the outer edge of your foot and then closing in. Outer edge, bring it in. Outer edge, bring it in. And outer edge, and bring it in. Come into center. Release your hands. Open it up. Roll it down through your spine. Stretch your arms up above you. Stretch your legs down below you. I'm just going to pull my mat down as so I have my assistant here helping me out. And I'm going to dig my heels into the floor and take a heel rock. So the heel rock, we want to soften our body. This is a kind of a weird image, but just imagine that you're just like a bag of water and let yourself release as much as you can. So that water is flowing, moving easily through you little waves, ripples, eddies, letting go. Letting go of any tension. We tend to get really good at holding our butt, holding our abs, holding, and then nothing moves. So we want to release all of that. Relax your glutes, relax your belly, relax your head and neck. Let it all go soft and easy. And then internally and externally rotate your legs. Let that go. We're going to do one more, um, Third time's a charm. One more bridge exercise. This time you're going to go up. Walk your feet so they're maybe sit bone distance apart, hip distance apart. So maybe four inches, anywhere between three and six inches with your heels. Get the little hands down by your sides. Actually, do I need my feet closer together? Maybe a little closer together than that. So just a little bit narrower. You're going to lift up one leg. You're going to just take it out to the side as far as you can before your pelvis starts to really drop down and then bring it in and lower down. The other leg comes up, take it out to the side, bring it back in and lower down. Step on the cat, press it up, out to the side, bring it in, lower down. Oh, I got it. There we go. Press it up, out to the side, bring it in. Lower down. I'm just having a little bit of an issue with somebody down here at this point in the exercise. So what I'm going to do, roll him over and turn around. Pressing up, leg goes up, carry it to the side, press it up and down. Up to the side, bring it up. Down, up, carry it out, bring it in. Down, up, carry it out, bring it in. Down one more time, each side, up, out, in. Down, last one, up, out, in, down, and roll it all the way down. And if there's any doubt whether my cats are completely spoiled, I think I just showed you that they totally are. <sighs> happy baby pose. Let your happy baby be a happy baby free flow in your baby, letting yourself listen into your body and move with that, wiggling around, adjusting. Rolling, and then let's roll forward and backward, rounding through your spine. If it hurts to go forward and backward, just stick with side side. So plow into a seated position. If you feel like being really exciting about it, you could come up and balance. You could take it in a pike up to the balance, just an option. Takes more, woo, more control. So as we work with more control, we're sort of binding the flow to be more specific, right? If we wanna be more free flow, if you need to let go more in your life, then make this really free flow. If you're very free flow and you could benefit from a little more structure, then go ahead and find that flow and make 
the exercise a little more specific. We need both. It's not a this way or that way. Both things do different things. All right. Oh, I feel like there's, there are exercises. See, my cat is really getting involved again today. This little tail in the mix. Um, I know what I want to do. So it's another exercise where we're going to be coming into that position, but let's have a little break before we do that. So our break is actually going to be a quad stretch. You're just going to roll onto one side, grab your foot and take it back. So opening the front of your hip flexor, ideally psoas is getting a little bit of movement in there. And your psoas isn't here right on the front of your body. It's connected into your lesser trochanter, the top inner knob of your femur head. And it's going in like along your spine, which is actually not like the inside front of your spine is pretty deep into your body. It's not like right back on the surface. Breathing into that. And then roll it to the other side. Same thing, just stretching it out, letting the front of the hips really open up, front of the quad opening up. And then release and come back and we're gonna do that other exercise. So the other exercise is gonna be, I haven't done this in forever. It's going to be, you're gonna start up here with your knees out, feet can be pointed, or if you're cramping, just relax your feet. But if you're not cramping, go for a point. You're going to inhale, open, and exhale, bring it up. If you need to, you can grab on. You want to pull through to really lengthen your spine, you can. You can also inhale, open, exhale, just come up to there. Inhale, stretch it out. Exhale, open. Inhale. You could also go the full way and come up to here if that feels good to you. It's good to do all of the things some of the time, none of the things all of the time, but work with different possibilities. Two more. Ooh, I'm cramping in my foot. And then relax, take it down. And let's go for a big stretch. It's gonna be sort of somewhere between a happy baby and this open pancake stretch. Bending and then stretching, inner thighs, hamstrings opening up. <sighs> Breathing into it. You can also stay open and just massage across your lower back. So for me, sacrum lower back tends to get tight. And I did a ballet class yesterday, so my hips need a little more release today. <sighs> All right, let's go with an internal rotation. Feet a little wider, internally rotate one leg and then the other. So feet are wider than your sticky mat, getting that nice inner spiral. So in this position, you can think, so I'm letting my ribs pop here and then I'm connecting them. Just know the difference between those two places. It's not that you always wanna stay like that, but it's not that you always wanna be like that. You wanna be able to be in both, knowing both places, right? Ribs more free, and ribs more connected. Uh, so the other thing you can work with here is either really spiraling that leg internally, really turning in or lengthening your knee further away from you. So internal spiral versus lengthening down in the femur head. So here would be my internal spiral. There would be my lengthening, right? Just slightly different things, playing with those things so that you aren't Stuck on one program, you have options. Good, and then let's bring it in. And we're gonna do another thing with your weights. Squeaky Deaky has settled into the chair. I think we can all breathe a big sigh of relief. And the peapod, of course, is up there on her throne. All right, we're gonna do a forearm side plank with a pull up. Um, I think I'm gonna go for just go for two sets, like a six. You can go for your threes, whatever works for you. If you wanna make this easier, easiest version, your hips don't come off the floor. Not so easy, hips come off the floor. A little bit harder, you're there. Hardest, you're there. I'm going for the easy balance. Going one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I'm gonna switch it around to the other side, rolling across my butt, throwing my legs the other way. You could just roll over whatever you need to do, popping it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, coming down. We're gonna repeat this exercise one more time, coming around to the first side. So this is a very exercise -y class. There's a little bit of free flow in it, but mostly we're just keeping going. Ah, so it's good for everybody to have a balance and ecology of practices that kind of balance each other out. That's the ecology of practices is a John Verbenke quote, going up and down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and take it around to the other side. So the ecology of practices, like for example, good to have a meditation practice, good to have a breathwork practice, good to have like a walking outside in the morning in the sunlight practice. But within movement, within exercise, we want practices that are strengthening. We want practices that are working on mobility, practices that are working on free flow and being in the moment, like all sorts of things. So much to do. One, two, three. So then you gotta kind of choose on any given day what you're doing. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and come in. And these things translate into our lives. Like if I feel stronger in my body, I'm gonna be stronger in the world. If I feel more flexible and adaptable in my body, it's gonna happen in the world. If I consciously make that decision that I'm gonna like, oh, I'm learning something here. Where can I apply this information? All right, we're gonna try this with weights. You can put your weight down if it's too much. It might be, we'll see how it goes. I'm a big fan of just experiment, see how it works. If you like it, do it. If you don't, don't. And also knowing that sometimes what didn't feel good today might feel good tomorrow. I've had teachers that I've taken and I've been like, wow, this is the worst teacher I've ever taken in my life. And then two years later, best teacher I've ever taken in my life. And the teacher hadn't changed that much, but I had changed. So it's all subject to change. I think I'm just gonna put one on each side. So I'm gonna go out. I'm just gonna go with one, I think, and in, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Switching it to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and coming in. A lot of times the workouts that you're doing, like you can do a mat workout and just add weights to different things and it's gonna intensify the workout, work more on bone de density and muscle strength etc. which as people age, especially women, everyone needs that. So we're gonna curl, let's just do a quick cat cow. Curl your toes under, rotate your shoulder blades down and kind of in an arch, stick out your butt. Think of pulling your chest forward and your tail back and then push, scoop up, tops of the feet to the floor, round your spine, scoop in, drop your head. Toes under arch, like you're getting ready to pounce, getting ready to spring, and then push and curl. Arch and curl and arch and curl. We're gonna do this little uh, wrist and arm exercise. 
elbows towards the floor, press up all the way to your tippy fingers and then lower the heels of the hands. Elbows down, up, through the heel of the hand, down, all the way to the floor or not. It could be a small bend. This would be fine if that's the range of motion today. If you can go all the way, great, do it. Really listen to your own body. Every day is a different day in your body. And then we're gonna change it. We're gonna go over the back of the hands, make little monkey fists. And then you're gonna arch chest open and push and curl. Arch, you can do the toes if you want, curling under, push and curl, arch and open, push and curl. Let's just do, I feel like we need, let's do this, let's do this. Palms of the hands open, palms in, open it out, bring it in, open it out, bring it in, open out, bring it in. Let the chest open, bring it in. Chest opens, bring it in. Chest opens, bring it in and open, open. So I teach this at the gym and I look around to see what people are doing. And a lot of people can't quite figure out what's going on. So if it takes longer to learn the exercise, just pause it, try it. If you're doing this on the TV, uh, learn it in whatever way you need to take your time. Sometimes it takes a while to build new patterning into your body, stuff that's unfamiliar, but we are now going to try this. And if you're uncomfortable on your knees, either stand, be in any other position. I'm just going to stay on my knees. Now we're going to try it with the weights. So the weights are going to go in and out in curling out opening in. So I'm getting a little cat cow with this rounding opening in and out. If it's too much with the weights, put them down, out, in, and out, and in, and out. Let, let go of the weights, put them down, and try it one more time without the weights. So you're gonna have more easy range of motion with no weight. So in and out, in and out. We're getting a nice spiral in our forearm, movement through the spine. So this type of movement is really an anti-device movement, right? If we spend a lot of time here and all of our tissue is kind of locked into a certain position or here, right, on our phones, we wanna open that back up. All right, let's do, let's do a downward dog. So coming into your downward dog, we're gonna, we're gonna move this a little bit. I'm gonna move everything back so that I can stay pretty much on screen. And in your downward dog, walk through your feet, bend one knee, bend the other. Ooh, the sun's coming out. It was raining this morning. Now the sun is shining through the window. Ah, so we're gonna lift our heels high, scoop our belly in, round the spine, roll it forward into a plank, and then push back with the heels, drop the head push with the arms, roll it up to the ceiling and lower your heels. Heels high, scoop your belly in, round your spine, roll it forward, push back through the heels, find your plank, drop your head, press it up, all the way to the ceiling, lower down, heels high, hollow, roll, round your spine, take it forward, find it, drop your head, push, roll it up to the ceiling and lower down. All right, taking the right leg up. The right leg is gonna go as high as it can and then knee into your chest, coming forward. Inhale, lift, cross it under to the other elbow. Inhale, lift, take it to the outer shoulder and then put your foot down on the floor. If you need a block there or any extra accoutrement, go for it. We're gonna backstroke with the right arm. One, two, three, and then change direction. One, two, three. That's all we're gonna do there. Hand back down to the floor, knee up, reach your leg to the ceiling, open, 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 pulsing up for 10, going one, two, three. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and release it down. Other leg up to the ceiling as high as it can go. Lift knee into your chest. Inhale, open. Knee crosses under. Inhale, open. Knee to outer shoulder. Foot comes down. Backstroke with that arm. Going one, two, and I'm following my hand with my eyes. Three, and then changing direction. One, two, three. Bringing it in, hand down. Ooh, foot up, reach it up to the ceiling. Pulsing for 10, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Come all the way down and relax. A couple of deep breaths. Relax your head, neck, and shoulders. Just take your hands up on your upper traps up here. Kind of draw down and then turn your head gently from side to side. So I'm pushing down with my hands, turning my head from side to side. And I'm going to relax my jaw and yawn. Ah, oh, that's popping open my ears. And then I'm gonna relax that, relax your hands, cross them over and the same thing. Looking from side to side, hands are squishing in. And then release, shake it out. Cross so the non-dominant hand is on top and one more time, look from side to side. Big breathing, jaw relaxed, face relaxed and open. What does that even mean? I'm not making any faces. Good. And let's come back in. Let that go. Just head down and then up. Head towards your belly button and then arch and lift. And one more. Good. And let's interlace our hands behind our back. Again, you can be on your knees or any other position standing. Take your hands down. Open the chest and lungs. I've interlaced my hands behind my back. Chest, lungs, and heart opening. If it doesn't feel good to drop your head back, don't do it. If it feels okay, go ahead and let it drop back. And then come in, opening your hands wide, coming onto hands and knees, big circles with your chest down towards the floor and then up. Pushing with your arms, hands are wide. And then the other way. Good, and then come in. Let's take it down onto our backs. We're just gonna do a little bit more ab work because we didn't do much in that today. And we wanna work a little bit more contralateral patterning. So hands behind your head, elbow to knee, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, flex your feet, push through your heels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Tippy toes like you're wearing high heels. One, two, pushing through the ball of your foot. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Spread out your toes. Nine, 10, 11, 12, and relax down. Turn your head from side to side. Ha, ah, take a big yawn, soften your face, free up your spine. So wiggle around, shake it out, just shake everything out. So let's add a little bit of free flow, whatever you've been holding on to. see if you can let it go. Shake it, shake it, shake it. And then relax down and we'll come up into a hip stretch. So I'm gonna do ankle to knee pose. You can do this with the bottom leg straight if that feels better or fold it under, whatever feels good to you, taking it forward, breathing, melting, letting go, surrender and soften. So our bodies are really three-dimensional, right? We have an up, down, side, side, forward, backward, and then all these diagonal possibilities. And the way that water moves inside of us, it's not moving like straight through. It has whirlpools, eddies. It's like it moves through in a much more 
fluid manner, which isn't linear. So what we're trying to move in these different ways to give our body a chance to really hydrate and build um, strength in the tissue as we change our relationship to gravity, as we move uh, with different strength building, mobility, flexibility exercises, we're demanding different things of our body. And undo it, let it go, give it a little bang, rotate in and out, switch it to the other side, fold it under, take it down, let go. Surrender and melt. And then come up again, give it a little bang. Let's cross one ankle over the other, quick twist. And then change legs, change directions. I'm going towards my leg. So I'm getting a contralateral stretch, cross body stretch. And then come back in, give it a little bang. Let's take it into a forward fold. Walk your butt from side to side, forward fold. If you're tight here, bend your knees a little bit. If you're looser, play between elongating your spine and rounding your spine. So if, you're, if it's very easy for you to be down here, Try both ways of being in there in a really curled position and also in a really lengthened position. And then release that, slide your feet underneath you, take your butt up to the ceiling. Let's open the feet wide. If you want to grab your arms and hang, swing from side to side, you can. Or you can also just shift, let your arms dangle. Whatever feels good to you. I'm bending one knee, bending the other. Free flow in the hang. Let your body release. And then coming into center, rolling all the way up to the top. Deep breath in. Inhale, open. Ah, exhale, shake it out, let it go. Any extra possibility that your lymphatic system isn't fully pumping, just shake it out to get it operational, get it online. Inhale, open. Exhale, shake is a good detoxifier. <laughs> letting out stuck energy, letting anything that's not moving start to move. Inhale, open. Exhale, shake, 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 shake. <laughs> you could even give yourself a little bounce on the floor. Rebound, nothing like doing a rebound for bone density and lymphatic movement. All right, if you are there in TV land, feel free to like, subscribe, and even buy me a coffee. And I am going to close this out. So thanks for making it that far. Bravo. Give yourself